Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good day students. This is a demonstration or just a quick video to do um, the Casbert net for contouring. And basically this is a demonstration for your lab for activity. Okay, first of all, definitely after you, you have to plot your poles first. So we have 100 readings that includes... Um, some of the like like light lateral left lateral normal fox and so on so basically this is what we have plotted for the post so you can see all the different dots over here and to make things uh, clearer we put into different colors like the pink green and uh, we have blue and um, the, the pencils as well so all these dot is are the poles that we have plotted from our uh, reading and then we overlay these poles on top of the Casper net so basically the Casper net contains the 10 horizon 10 circles so we have the circle in the center which is the first one and then the last one would be the uh, the, the, the the 10 circle and each of the circles they are divided into smaller triangle and this triangle made up into several hexagons so if you are not clear you can see that each of them have hexagons so I'm drawing into one hexagons over here so you have this particular one hexagon similarly each triangle this particular triangle as example over here they overlap with at least three hexagons so this would be the first hexagon that it overlap then it also overlap with this hexagon on top of it this one the second one over here and it also overlap with the other hexagons here gone over here Alright, so after you put your poles on top the Casbert net, what you do is you count how much uh, in one hexagon, how many uh, dots they are. So this is a bit uh, straightforward, however it is uh, a bit uh, taking time and it requires full attention or focus. So basically, I these are the amount of uh, poles that we have in each of the hexagon. So what we have here, I'm giving you an example from the southern southwest side of the Casbah net. So let's see. We started with the. This is the area where we have all the poles. So we started with the outside, which is the first hexagon. So the first hexagon would be this one. You don't have to draw all the hexagons. But if you prefer to draw it again, then it's okay. But it will actually um, reduce the meaning of having overlaying the Casbert net at the bottom. So basically, the first hexagon is over here. And this triangle, these edges, does not have any poles. So we see at the bottom here does not have any pole. So that is considered as zero. So that's why we put zero over here. Zero and zero. So in the center here, I have a triangle uh, that connecting towards this side. Top, left and right. So let's see. We in this triangle. So I was looking at this edge. So I have one pole over here. So these poles actually only overlap. So basically, this particular hexagon in this particular smaller hex, uh, triangle only have one pole. So it gives the numbering one. Now we move to the edges of. We have the triangle over here just now. So we move to these edges. In this edge, I have. I I need to count how many poles that I have in this particular. So I have at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 over here. So in this hexagon, which is this one, now it's overlaying over here. 
this particular hexagon, I have seven poles. So now I have contour 0, contour 1, contour 7. So in between contour 1 to contour 7, definitely we have the value of 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Basically, it's a very closely spaced contour because just in between one triangle over here, you have to start from 1 to 7. So now, if we, we need to repeat all this for all the poles that you have. I will give you another example using the top sections of this cast belt net. So in this top section, we have quite a number of poles over here that you can see several poles. So basically the overlapping poles and the size of how you use your pencils to, to make the poles actually uh, influence the counting. So here I have this hexagon and in this particular triangle I have one overlapping poles which is this one the smaller one over there so that's why I put it as one over here and here is zero because there's no poles intersecting to that so for this particular point I have I check back at the bot at the back so I have two one and two poles so that's why at this particular triangle edges I have two po uh, the contour will be two so here from this point to the next point the contour is increasing by step one so if we compare to this point the contour is increasing from one to seven and here is one to two that's why this one when you draw your contour it will be very closely spaced as this one is only um when you draw it's only one over there and two so this is will be like equally spaced so now um, you will do that for the whole cast bed net for the whole poles area and then you will start doing your contouring so in order to do this contouring remember that your n number the sample number given was 100 basically to, to know the density of your contour how dense is your contour would be you actually need to um, 100 divided by 100 times 100% it will be every one contour basically you should start with one and then contour two contour three four and so on so in this <coughs> casper net counting the contour uh, the highest peak the highest poles in one hexagon that i found is actually 13 which is in the center part over here this uh, the eastern side of the net so we know that if I'm doing to do this contouring, I should have at least uh, maximum 13 contours. So uh, from 4 to 13. But this will, um, in order to have this 13 contour in this small area, is actually a very dense um, contouring. So I have, uh, my GA have actually helped me to do this contouring and then we have this example so this is a very dense contour uh, starting from contour 1 up to contour 13 increment every one okay so this is how the uh, the dense contour looks like but understanding that this is um, it is also acceptable if you start doing your contouring every two. So let's say you can start from one and then move to three and then move to five and so on. So the last point would be your contour 13, which is the peak over here. So if you are doing the contouring in every two, you can also start with two, four, six, and so on but I use uh, one um, number ganjil because uh, we have the highest peak at 13 so I want to include 13 in my contour so that will be something like this so I started with contour 1 at the outside and then I started 3 and 13 so how you do the contouring actually basically you cannot 
connect the dots. You cannot connect the poles. The poles is actually not the contour. So you need to connect in between the numbers. So now I'm I say I would like to start with 1. So I have at the bottom here, I have number 1, 2, 4 and 5. 5 would be my highest peak in this northern section. So I should start with 1. So 1 will be there. And here I have 0 and 2. So 1 will be somewhere in between. That will be something like this. So I did not touch 2 because this is will be 1. So 1. So here I have 0 and 5. So 1 will be just next to 0. And then I have 1 over there. And I should touch a bit. So when we are at the edges of the primitive circle, we should not close our contouring. Instead, we should keep it open and if there are a similar number at the bottom over here, we should continue it here. But in this case, it's, um, it's just an open contour like that. So I have 1, this would be my contour 1 and then I should go for 3. 3 would be in between here to there, here. So that's it. This is, I have 1, 3, so I have a large space over here because the 2 is in between. And then I should have 5. For 5, I can close it because that's the only the center part. So the contouring, let's compare. This is every 2. You got it like that and also like this. But for every 1, you're going to have similar shape. Similar shape except that this is denser so this one have one two three four five this one is only one three and five similar to these sections in the eastern side so i would love to see your result i accept both in high density every one contour or in every two okay maximum is every two no need to um if you make it every three then it's going to be very very uh, sparse your contouring so the last questions would be you need to come up with the average um, average uh, planes for your each of the poles so what you need to do is actually you just need to have so at least we have group 1 over here group 2 over here and group 3 over here means the density uh, populations of the poles so what you need to do is just rotate back to the center part I mean uh, we should use the this smith net so you we rotate back roughly to the central part that so this is I consider this one as one group because the dense populations over here of the poles so we bring this to equator and we calculate it from the center over here, the, the 13, contour 13 to 90. So this is where it's positioned, 10, 20, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 90. 90 is the sigma, uh, the, the, the directions of this particular plane. So you put the line over here. So this will be the average uh, planes for this uh, pose, for this deformation. Similarly, for this one, we bring this to the center. So basically, this is already at the center and then we calculate from 13 to uh, up to 90. So we have here 10, 20, 13, 14, 15, 20, 13, 14. 50, 60, 70, 90 over here. So the 90 will be this one. This will be the sigma 2 because it's the minimum. And then um, this one, we can put it to the center here. So 10 is, uh, 13 is over here. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So the 90, this will be representing this one this particular pulse position so you now you have your average directions for, uh, for the strike and uh, strike and deep directions for your uh, principles so that's all for uh, lab 4
I hope this is helpful for you. Right, thank you.